Poets attract so much admiration and curiosity from us humans. We've attempted to understand their abilities and instinctive behaviors to the extent that some great mythologies have been created around them. Some of these have included having nine lives, that they always fall on their feet, or that they can't stand dogs. Many of these conceptions about our feline friends are untrue. To promote a better understanding of cats and their true characteristics, Animal Life brings you the top 10 myths about cats you should stop believing. Number one, cats have nine lives. Who has not heard that cats have nine lives? This is perhaps the most widely spread myth about cats, even if most people take it with a pinch of salt. Perhaps it comes from a cat's agility and ability to escape accidents or avoid fatal falls. It might even come from some ancient story told through generations. The unfortunate reality is a cat only has one life, just as we of all other animal species do. Additionally, while they can be good at taking care of themselves, they're not invulnerable. They require preventative medicine and special care with food and hygiene to ensure a long and healthy life. Number two, black cats bring bad luck. This untruth has its origins way back in the Middle Ages, when black cats were specifically associated with witchcraft. In addition to being a baseless prejudice, this belief can be highly negative for black cats. According to statistics, black cats are the least likely to be adopted from animal shelters. There are a few reasons this belief is merely a myth in principle. The color of their fur is nothing to do with a cat's luck or that of anyone near it. The cat's color is simply a genetic trait they inherit. The only reason people think they have bad luck around them is from people spreading this false belief. The best and most practical way to dispel myths about black cats is to have one as a pet. Those who have already had the opportunity to share their lives with these cats will know that they bring joy and warmth to our homes, not bad luck. Number three, milk is okay for cats. Although the rise of dairy-free products has somewhat hurt the reputation of lactose in general, the picture of a cat drinking milk from a bowl still remains for many of us. This is why a lot of people still think it is okay for cats to drink cow's milk. All mammals are born to drink milk. It's the food they require to develop as infants. However, their bodies change as they grow and develop new nutritional needs. Because of this, they also develop different eating habits. While they are breastfeeding from their mothers, mammals produce a large amount of an enzyme called lactase, the role of which is to digest the lactose from their mother's milk. Once they reach the weaning stage, the production of this enzyme progressively declines. This is to prepare the animal for its transition to solid adult food, as well as helping them to cease consuming breast milk and become incapable of feeding on their own. Although some cats may still produce a certain amount of lactase enzyme, the majority of adult males are allergic to lactose. The consumption of milk for many of these animals can lead to severe gastrointestinal issues. Therefore, it is a myth that milk is a suitable food for our cats. In the case of feeding kittens, which don't have access to the mother's milk, we must give an artificial milk formula available in veterinary clinics. As for adult cats, there are many commercial food options which are prepared to meet their particular nutritional requirements. Number four, pregnant women should not have cats. This is a sad and unfortunate myth which has ended with some cats being abandoned by their owners when someone in the family falls pregnant. The origin of this myth is the apparent risk of transmission of a pathology known as toxoplasmosis. In basic terms, this is a disease caused by a parasite, Toxoplasma gondii, whose primary form of contamination comes from direct contact with the feces of cats. However, toxoplasmosis is very rare in cats which have been domesticated from birth, eat commercially prepared cat food, and have been given the proper inoculations. If a cat is not a carrier of this pathogenetic parasite, 
there is no risk of transmission to a pregnant woman. A pregnant woman can entirely prevent toxoplasmosis by cleaning a cat's litter while wearing gloves and avoiding the handling of raw meat. In any case, if you suspect your cat may have toxoplasmosis, a veterinary visit is required to undertake the proper diagnosis. Number five, cats always land on their feet. Although most of the time, cats will land on their feet when they fall, this is not a hard and fast rule in 100% of cases. Cats have a very flexible skeleton, which provides them excellent agility and ability to withstand heights. However, their endurance depends on the height from which the cat falls. It's not possible for them to always land on their feet. If the feline has a chance to turn their body around of their own accord, they might be able to land safely. However, even if they do land on their feet, a fall from a great enough height is likely to cause damage. There is no guarantee that they will be uninjured. Additionally, cats only develop this natural orientation instinct known as straightening from its third week of life. This is why falls are especially dangerous for baby kittens, and really they should be avoided throughout the cat's whole life where possible. Number six, cats can be educated alone. Although cats can naturally develop many instinctive skills and behaviors characteristic of their species, it doesn't mean they can educate themselves 100%. Actually, training is not just possible, but highly encouraged for cats. Proper education will assist your kitten in properly adapting to life in your home, get on with their human family, and make behavioral problems less probable as they get older. Number seven, cats are traitorous and do not care about their owners. Felines definitely have an independent nature and lean towards solitary habits, but this doesn't mean that cats don't care about their owners. Certain characteristics simply inherent in their character. However, domestication has altered and continues to do so in many aspects of a cat's behavior, promoting better exhibitions of cooperation and coexistence. Many people compared the nature of cats to those of dogs, but this is not really fair. They are different animals with different types of life and ethograms. Canines have always lived in packs to ensure the survival of their species. Cats, along with their closest relatives, have had to survive as solitary beings, hunting their own food and looking after themselves. This means they are often uncertain of unknown individuals and circumstances as a type of self-preservation. Number eight, cats and dogs do not get along. As we have previously discussed, a positive home life and early socialization can help sculpt certain facets of feline behavior. And the same can be said for dogs. If a cat is properly introduced to a dog before the age of eight weeks and keeps a regular relationship with them, they'll learn to think of them as a friendly creature. Even some cats which have experienced this type of proper socialization get on well with dogs. Number nine, cats see in black and white. Human eyes have three types of color receptor cells, blue cone cells, red cone cells, and green cone cells. This is how we're able to distinguish between a large range of color and tones. Cats and dogs do not have the red cone cells, so they're not able to perceive pink and red tones. They also have trouble with recognizing the intensity and saturation of colors, but it's incorrect that cats can only see in black and white, as they can distinguish two tonalities such as blue, green, and yellow. Number 10, cats need less care than dogs. This particular myth can be pretty dangerous. It's usual to hear that cats don't need preventative medicine because of natural resistances built up in their bodies. While they are strong and independent animals, they can also be fragile in other ways. As with any other type of pet, they require a particular level of care with their food, hygiene, vaccinations, deworming schedule, oral hygiene, physical activity, mental stimulation, and socialization. It's a great myth that cats don't need to be looked after as much as dogs, and neglecting any of your cat's needs can end up in a health conditions down the line. That's our video for today. What do you think? Are there any more false myths you'd like to share with us? If you enjoyed today's video, 
give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.